This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. And then circling back to Amelia Lay Bulcepi's argument, could brain injury explain Henry VIII's tyrant behavior? I'm leaving that up to you, Rob, and our podcast audience as to whether or not they feel that is the case or not. So what are your thoughts, Rob, based on what I just presented? I'm taking my cap off and throwing it down. (laughs) I say without a doubt in my mind that he definitely was a tyrant because of his brain injuries. I thought it was very interesting how he was described as a king prior to the brain injury. Um, Mm -hmm. And then how over the course of time, specifically the one um, where he uh, was pole vaulting being the catalyst. And the fact that I didn't share this, but after that, five months later, is when Anne Boleyn was arrested for treason on the grounds of adultery, Mm. um, which if you look it up, there's really no proof that she actually was having an affair, whereas with Catherine Howard, the fifth wife, there was proof. Um, So she got beheaded and he ended up remarrying to Jane Seymour, his third wife. Unfortunately, she died after childbirth a few days afterwards. Um, Because back then they did not have great medical care, especially for women in labor for prolonged periods of time, which she was. And Edward IV was briefly king of England. He was uh, her and Henry's son. Um, He then got married a couple years later to Anne of Cleves, um, but that was quickly annulled six months later because he wasn't attracted to her and Catherine Howard kind of got dangled in front of him and did not um protest the annulment which actually makes me think she was the smartest of all six of his wives because he rewarded her generously for the rest of her life in terms of housing financials all the stuff as a woman you would want to get after a divorce and more (laughs) now plus she knew what was going to happen if she protested it anyway yeah, she did. She did know from the um, from Anne Boleyn, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Catherine of Aragon, unfortunately, um, because she was so opposed to it, even though it happened, like she died isolated and lonely because Henry punished her for, you know, going against it. So she kind of learned from both of those experiences that yeah. I should just go along with what he wants. It was only six months anyway. If I go back to my native country of Germany, like my brother's probably not going to be very happy with me and he's a Duke. So she was very smart. Um, And then Catherine Howard, the fifth wife, she was young. She was like 17, 18, 19, somewhere around there. Um, And Henry at that time was old and obese and had, you know, leg ulcers that smelled. So, um, she definitely d- dallied outside of the marriage and uh, he found oh, yeah. out about it, it you know, uh, <laughs> because, you know, as Ben Franklin says, the only way to keep a secret is if one of the people are dead. So mm-hmm. um, he ended up beheading her. And then his sixth wife was the widowed Catherine Parr. She actually almost lost her head for um, heresy, but she managed to convince him that uh, she was just a poor, ignorant woman. And, you know, he as the man could educate her on matters of religion. And that's why she deferred to him. And I guess she would be the second smartest wife because she did manage to save her head because she would have been arrested within days had she not done that. Oh, she stroked his ego. She's like, oh, you're so smart. (laughs) Exactly. And he ended up passing away, you know, a couple of years into their marriage. So she ended up remarrying, but dying uh, either during or after childbirth. I don't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, so a lot of wives, uh, you know, 
not good relationships with his daughters. Um, I mean, look, Bloody Mary ended up uh, executing a bunch of uh, heretics, you know, of the Protestant religion. You know, she wanted to make uh, England Catholic again. So I think um, it was fascinating that the Pope wouldn't uh, go along with his plan. So in typical male fashion that they don't get their way, they're like, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to start my own religion. I don't need you. <laughs> well, part of the reason he did not do it was because he was aligned with Charles of Spain and Catherine of Aragon was his niece. So oh. the Pope needed Spain's support because they were the power country at the time. So that was part of the reason. The other reason was there was no real proof that, um, you know, Catherine and uh, Henry were living in sin like he claimed because she was actually married to his brother, Arthur, who was very sick um, and passed away. And that marriage she alleges was never consummated while hers and Henry's was. And now after all these years, even though she was able to give him Mary the first, she wasn't able to give him the boy he wanted. Oh. So yeah, it, it, it was a messy situation. That's why they called it the King's great matter because that was the politically <laughs> correct term back then. I, I can only imagine what they would call it nowadays. <laughs> well, I tell you politics and What's the other word I'm looking for? Jealousy and power. Not much has changed through the centuries, has it? And uh, Elizabeth I actually was the virgin queen because she never got married. And they're convinced that part of the reason she never got married is because uh, she was a child when her mom was beheaded. Jane Seymour died in childbirth when she was a child. She actually spent a lot of time with Anne of Cleves. Her and Anne of Cleves... They were kind of like an honorary mother and daughter. So oh, she saw cool. what happened to her. She knew as like a young woman that uh, Catherine Howard got beheaded. And then with Catherine Parr almost getting beheaded and being a widow, like, I mean, all of those things, you know, kind of dissuade you from wanting to get yeah, married. She's if traumatized you already. <laughs> as a child and as a woman being powerless. Why have a co-monarch when she could have all the power? She was already queen. She did not need to marry. Yeah. Marriage was of no benefit other than to continue the Tudor line. But if you think about it, the Tudor line died with her. So she kind of got the last laugh, yeah. <laughs> whether that was intentional or not. But kind of kind of makes you wonder if maybe it was. Yes, it, it definitely it definitely makes you wonder. Yeah, because, uh, you know, when Henry died, it automatically went. But since he was a child, you know, it was mainly a regency. Yeah. And then, you know, Bloody Mary took over, but she was only queen for a couple of years before she passed away. And then it went to Elizabeth the first and she was queen for many, many years. So yeah. those Elizabeths just like, like, don't know when to quit. Yes. Um. Kate Blanchett, uh, I think she got like either a nomination or award for playing her mm -hmm. in a movie. I still haven't been able to see it, which is a shame because I keep hearing it's a great movie. But now I think I need to find a way. I don't know. Maybe Amazon Kindle credits. Because <laughs> yeah, it's, cat, it's going to be on their somewhere. In the poor house right now <laughs> um, right? <laughs> to watch it. But if you guys have ever seen it, I think she does a really good job of showing how wonderful uh, Elizabeth the first was as a queen, not yeah. to be confused with Elizabeth the second, who was uh, King Charles's. So. Yeah. Also another Elizabeth that didn't know when to retire. <laughs> <laughs> she worked up to the dying day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, have you ever watched the crown? No, I've not seen the crown. I recommend it. Okay. I thought it was really very noted. fascinated. Um, whether it was accurate or not, who knows, but I think there's, I think there's accuracy in it, but I think there's a lot of, um, what's the Historically word? Historically made up stuff because I know the Tudors had some of that too, mm -hmm. to make it interesting. Um, 
is that on, is the crown on netflix or how do you watch the crown it is I on netflix crown. yes okay i have netflix so i can definitely watch that i'm gonna yeah. make a note of that now because if it's not written down it doesn't get done as somebody who is adhd ocd all the letters of the alphabet Maybe. i have a very hard time concentrating and sticking with the program and especially stuff like that I, I watched it and didn't stop okay i will definitely let you know what i think yeah i was gonna say something and i've lost much my, my train of thought it's been, on a long a tangent. Week. it's been a long week oh it's been a long <laughs> week and a half for me so yeah we both it. have our we both had things that are going on in our lives and you know i'm sure people watching this or and listening to this will identify with this that life just keeps going on whether you like it or not but my goodness exactly goodness 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 um death diseases um illnesses <laughs> i mean we're not living it we're not living back in those old old days life needs to slow down mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but yeah ashley i'll let you have the closing thoughts don't forget to like subscribe and share i am ashley and i am rob and one note before we don't don't click stop yet i saw you almost hit the stop button one thing i want to say before we go is ashley people tremendously miss you when you're not here and i get people saying where's ashley at is ashley okay so i do want to make a comment about that yes so rob and i have had this conversation um i don't want the podcast having to stop because of something coming up with me so i have told rob to continue hosting without me and i will come back when needed um, unfortunately I'm not the type of person that can host the podcast because I don't have like the Riverside and all that kind of stuff. So you'll never see me as a solo host, but that's the one thing I don't want the podcast to pause for a week, two weeks, three weeks because of something going on with me. So, yeah. um, I'm good. Uh, thank you guys all for the well wishes. I do yeah. appreciate it, but Angel needed my attention you know the past week and we do have a very um long journey ahead of us so yeah. you know just ashley's not me. dying she's not dying but just put those rumors to rest everything's fine there knock um, on wood rob that's not funny <laughs> oh you said wood <laughs> but um yeah but there are times that ashley won't be able to be here unfortunately because sometimes our our schedules don't even line up so it's it's hard it is hard. Um, and actually, maybe I need to get you access to Riverside if you want to do some solo projects yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm good. No, this was originally started as a solo project for you, and you kind of <laughs> kept me around. So, yeah, I, I kind of like the way things are going. So sorry, people. <laughs> we had a great connection that first podcast, and I couldn't, I mean, I could have just kept going by myself and good grief you know who knows but i really wanted no I, I i'm not trying to be funny seriously I, I there was a connection between me and ashley that first time and no i do agree with that we're we're like brother and sister we really are and you know when the pipe when the camera goes off we still keep in communication and mm -hmm. you know if, if i need an, an ear to listen we text each other and and it's even though we're miles apart, we're really close. So, and I appreciate you, Ashley, for everything that you do. And thank and, you. I uh, appreciate you too. Yeah. So it's nice that I, I stepped on her closing thoughts, but like she said, like, subscribe, share, and anything else you're supposed to do on YouTube. So see you guys next week. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>